about the state of this program now. I know you guys are above 500 for the first time in the other three weeks, and where this program is now trending as it heads towards maybe its biggest series of the season this weekend. I mean, I think you know, great team win. You know, at the end of the day, everybody, a lot of guys contributed. Um, a lot of guys pitched in and did their part. Um, a lot of big moments, and you know, we we got we got punched in the mouth and, and knocked down, but but we bounced back. And to me, that's the that's the important part is they continue to grind and continue to battle. And um, you know, we knew Grand Canyons; they're good, man. You know, they're scrappy. They're going to come in and and give us all they got. And um, you know, we had them down there to. Through, through four, but but they were able to bounce back with a big grand slam by Crenshaw, and um, you know, and they, they put us on our heels. So, but but our guys uh, locked in and battled, and, and were able to get some base runners there in the ninth and come up with a big hit. So, uh, didn't play great, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, the team rallied together, and that was what was important. How did you react with you guys falling behind in these, these last four games initially, and then being able to come back? Um, how have you seen this group develop its callus over this recent stretch? I mean, I don't. I, I think the great thing is, obviously, we don't like getting behind, but but the great thing is we know that we can come back on anybody, and and if we get down, there's no quit, and we're going to keep coming back. Uh, so in order to, or tonight, the example, obviously getting the lead and then giving it up, and then having to bounce back again, that's that's a sign of a good team to win late and, and be able to come back after you've given up the lead and respond to it. So. Um, you know, hopefully the the mindset and mentality seems to start taking like it's taking shape, and these guys are just playing hard. So that's all we can ask for. How do you carry this kind of momentum now? Um, you know, I think it's uh, you know the old adage, one game at a time. But as long as they continue, you know, playing with confidence and and understanding that you don't have to be pretty. You don't have to be, everything doesn't have to go perfectly in order for you to win a game. You can win ugly, and that's okay. Um, long as you keep grinding, keep battling, and, and playing the, you know, playing hard, um, which these guys are doing. And that's kind of what I told them in there after this, is hey, it wasn't pretty, but, but it's a W, and you keep grinding, keep battling. It doesn't have to be pretty every night. Um, long as you continue playing the, playing the game the right way and, came, and keep playing hard, that's, uh, that's what we're about. And good things happen when you do that. And what's the level of confidence uh, going into that series, considering uh, you could not trust the bullpen arms that they get used to that? Well, I mean, I think we didn't overtax anybody, so I think that was good. I think it works out in our favor that we got them on the mound, kept them sharp, but we didn't overtax anybody. Um, you know, Adam Barons, I think, threw over was the only guy to throw the number of pitches that, that might, you know, not allow him to be available Friday. He threw 50, 51 pitches. Everybody else was under under twenty five. So, I mean, that's they got three days off before Friday, so everybody should be hot and ready to go on Friday. Talk about the approach and big moments at the time for this team this season. Last five games, they over 450 with Ryder's current position. What do you feel about the adjustment for this team to get big hits? Uh, confidence. You know, baseball's crazy like that, and it, it gets uh, contagious, I think, when somebody breaks the ice and finally comes through with a big hit, and then the weight comes off everyone's shoulders, and they just relax and go go play and get back to being the confident group that they are. So they play better when they're confident and, and that confidence is rolling right now. What is the confidence they necessarily have in the depth of this offense right now, considering the fact that you put out a lineup today that necessarily had a lot of guys who were necessarily maybe second or third on the total pool in their positions, but then the seventh day, the ninth, you put in maybe the regulars down <laughs> in the kitchen spots. Was that always the plan or to put them in those positions to put Tobias Williams and Compton in those situations? Or did you, were you, how did you feel about overall the performances of well, I think uh, you know the plan going into the game. Them starting a left-hander, I wanted to to get some guys in the lineup that, that we're going to need in the second half. Um, you know, Trey Newman hasn't played a ton. We, we got to get him in some games. Um, you know, Lance has has been fighting for some playing time as of late. You know, with the way he's been swinging, Josiah Cromick. You know, those are good players that we got to keep sharp somehow and. Um, it's tough because every you know every game is is uh, you know kind of a must win game and it, it's tough to to take out some of your quote unquote starters and and put these guys in but the the facts are um, we need to do that I need to do that more often and shake things up not only to keep them sharp but also to remind our starters hey don't get too soft and complacent because these guys can these guys can take your job and, and play as well so. Um, 
you know, but I knew they were obviously going to start a left-hander and, and probably run a string of lefties at us. Um, and once they ran out of lefties, then we were going to put our left-handed hitters in and and against their right-handers. So, um, but the good news is, that, or you know, the plan was kind of regardless of when they brought right-handers in throughout the game, I had pretty good left-handed hitters waiting on the bench uh, for that right situation. So I knew it was a matter of time before that happened, and. Um, Almost a little bit too late, but um, we were able to get it done. What can you say about Brandon's at bat in the ninth? Is it, it being the ninth inning, you having obviously played before, but not like over pressing and just taking you know the pitches and drawing that walk? Yeah, I mean, I think it was you know big, a lot of big at bats, and that was just uh, another one. Um, 2 0 pitch. I, I can't wait to see where that one was because if that was down the middle, I'm like, man, that's your that's your moment to shine, big boy. You know, that's why you're in there. But uh, the facts are, he didn't let the moment get too big for him. He stayed within himself and worked to walk. And um, you know, Kian Vu come, came up with a big hit there, and you know, a lot of a lot of good at bats. Mario Demera, another good solid at bat, worked to walk, and um, obviously Harris came up with a big knock there, but. Uh, a lot of great at bats throughout the night. Stephen and Dina um, made mention to him that, you know, trying not trying to do too much. He started the rally and there in the third with the walk, and then again in the fourth with the walk and not trying to do too much. A couple of good base running reads on his part too. So, you know, just little things like that. You continue to add little things up, and they equal a win. What's the outlook on Tom Springs being able to go on Friday after the week? Um, most likely not. Um, this weekend, so he's gonna he's gonna see another doctor tomorrow um, and just kind of get a kind of a third opinion on everything. I think and and everything looks structurally like it's fine. It's just uh, an irritated bicep tendon that needs to calm down. And um, but we're probably gonna be without him this weekend, unfortunately. What are you looking at for Friday? Um, just coming up, you know yet? No, um, we just we were honestly trying to get through this game and see where we stood. Um, do like I said, uh, clearly I ran the kitchen sink out to try to win this game. Um, now we we'll see. I think everybody should be available. Um, we'll see what our best matchup looks like on Friday, um, and go from there. Just so, kind of, yeah, just kind of with the offense to get to the six-two lead and then a couple one-two three innings kind of back to back. How do you make sure the offense continues to be explosive and build on itself and not kind of die out kind of like it did in those middle innings? You know, I mean, that's the challenge, right? It is just continue to try to put together good at-bats. We had base runners in those innings, I think, um, or maybe we didn't. I can't. There's a few, like one, two, three. Yeah, okay, I mean, you know, those just try to continue to put together good at-bats, you know, and that's that's how we, um, you know, kind of started coming out of this thing was, was, hey, let's not worry about the results. Let's just worry about putting together good A-Bs. And, you know, they're not always going to happen. I mean, those guys are over there competing and have good stuff, too. So it's not always going to work the way you want it to, but as long as you keep grinding after it and hopefully at the end of the day you have more good at-bats than not. It seems like there's a pass the baton mentality when these um, big innings are happening. Obviously, the bottom of the third, nine batters came to play. What are you seeing when that's kind of happening where it's just everyone's getting a hit after another and that's kind of moving like that? Well, I mean, I think when you look at uh, – you know, we didn't have any home runs again tonight. Uh, it's just guys not trying to do too much. Stay within themselves. Stay, you know, low line drives in the middle of the field, and you know, take their walks when they need to. Um, not trying to swing out of the zone. Not try to do too much. Um, you know, we're doing a much better job of laying off breaking pitches down, um, which has kind of been an emphasis as of late. So when you do that, you get better pitches to hit, and you take more walks. So. I think when you do that, you get more base runners and the line keeps moving and, and opportunities keep presenting themselves. So um, I've been pleased with that as of you know the last several games. Ian talked about um, how he comes to the yard every day, expecting to get um, Just the mental preparedness as a group um, from points where they're having a mental focus. Um, how have you seen with these new coach hitters coming in with these situations and being able to provide as far as just like before the game, leading into the week, practice, mental preparation as a whole, to be able to execute at any given moment? Well, I mean, that, it's tough to do. Um, but I think at the end of the day, those are the expectations. Um, regardless, you know, we I, I continue to preach these guys, be ready for your opportunity. It's coming. Um, you know, a day like today, we use better majority of the roster today, um, you know, in today's game. So it, 
everybody needs to stay ready and be ready at all times. And, and um, you know, Kean has all but mastered that, or at least from the mental aspect of being ready to go, because um, he knows that he can be used at any outfield position, any pinch hitting moment, first base, pinch run. Um, he's just a, he's a weapon, you know, whether or not he's starting or not, he's, he's a weapon that we can use um, in a lot of different roles. Have you noticed more of a, um, I guess, team buy-in through that aspect of Um, you know, I think, uh, I think everybody, you know, I know everybody wants to play. Um, and that's, that's great. I want them to continue to want to play and have that mindset that they expect to play and want to play. But if they didn't want to play, then <laughs> we might have to find another spot for them. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's a fine line between wanting to play and let that detract from the team concept. Um, then and just buying into what we're doing and saying, yeah, whatever you need today. Um, so I think these guys have done a really good job, especially as of late, is just saying, okay, whatever my role is, I'm going to do it the best I can today and um, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Since so it's like the two best hitting teams in the conference matching up this weekend with Eagle Green State, with the lineup right now and high, how high the team is right now, going against Oregon State, it's kind of had its low point this season after a weekend loss to USC. How do you go to Corvallis and show this one best team in the conference? Um, stick to our guns and play our game. I think we'll be fine. Um, you know, Oregon State's, uh, you know, they're good. They, they got good pitching. They got good hitting. They got, uh, you know, their leadoff hitters, Babe Ruth right now. Um, it's been, if you throw him a strike, he's hitting a homer. So, you know, we already know that. Uh, and we know that they're, what they're capable of doing, but we also know what we're capable of doing too. So. Um, we stick to our guns and play our game. I like our chances. From the uh, player accountability standpoint, how do you feel like that's improved through the home stand? Um, you know, winning five straight. What are some things that maybe changed from that perspective? I think the mindset is now we're expecting to get things done, right? And, and to me, that's some of that's accountability. Some of that is just okay, guys. The expectations are we're going to figure out a way to win. We're going to figure out a way to. to we're not going. to we're going to figure out a way to get done things done in the right situations here. So, um, you know, Ethan Mendoza with a big knock today with, with two strikes and I think two outs, um, you know, figuring out a way to get on top of the baseball and, and get shoot one up the middle. I mean, those are, those are big things. Base running, you know, that, that we had today was, was outstanding. Nick McLean tagging on that ball that, uh, who hit that ball? Campy. Somebody hit one to deep, uh, Deep left center, Nick came back and tagged on it and, and moved up and ended up scoring. Right, that's that's a big run. Um, even though we were still still behind by by one, that's a big run. So, um, just little things like that. On Dina freezing on the line drive that Mendoza hit, that their shortstop made a heck of a play on. Like we get doubled up on that ball if we're if we're not paying attention. You know, I mean that's an easy one to just keep going and think it's gonna fall in, but he froze and was able to get back. I mean, those they end up scoring. So those are big, kind of not going to show up in the box score plays that, you know, guys are starting to hold each other accountable on doing base running the right way, doing things the right way that ultimately lead to wins. So um, that part of it's going in the right direction. You talked about, you talked about like the differences between what you feel with this team and when you were playing. Do you feel like you're getting closer to that or is there still more, still more work that needs to be done? To get to where you kind of felt like it was when you were still playing. Well, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be that old grumpy guy that says when I played it was better than than when this played. So let me get get that clear out of the way. But I do know that there are some pieces of the teams that I played on that that work regardless of what area you play in, and accountability is the main thing um, for me. And so I'm not asking these guys to have my personality or the personality of those teams. Um, but you take things from successful teams in the past and you try to incorporate that type of culture that makes successful teams. And I think the biggest thing is expectations and accountability to those expectations. So, um, again, these guys are doing a much better job of that. On that note of uh, accountability and not making excuses, you talked about in the stretch, the two-strike inning has significantly improved and not letting the umpire dictate the outcome of those at-bats. How have you seen this group um, kind of dictate their own outcomes? Um, I, I think, um, again, I, uh, starting to play with a little bit more free and easy and confidence um, in themselves. 
um, trusting what their the the work the body of work that they're doing throughout the week is should prepare them and give them confidence to go into a game regardless of who they're pitching or who they're facing. So, um, you know, and they're starting to have some success with it. So I think that's starting to breed a little confidence and these guys are trusting what they're doing and, and seeing the results work that if, if we, you know, have a better two strike approach or lay off the breaking balls down that we're actually getting better pitches to hit and are able to, you know, put up runs with two outs and come up with big two out RBIs. So, um, all that's kind of starting to fester and, and snowball a little bit.